you have, uh, if you have a bunch of money, let's say you have a hundred million dollars and it's, and it's land and buildings and a company and the government wants it, they hold the gun to your head and they take it. And if you won't give it to them, they shoot you and they take it and they get it all. But if you have a, that same money in Bitcoin and the keys are in your head, the government wants your money. No, if they shoot you, they get none of it. You see, so maybe we just split the difference. I'll give you 2% a year. I'll give you 3%, right? Ultimately, maybe I'll give you half, but I keep the other half, right? It's a negotiation. And uh, that, in, that punishes violence or discourages violence, encourages negotiation and peaceful resolution. Ultimately, if the government insists on spending money they don't have, someone's going to pay for it. And so if you have wealth in the society, it's in your best interest to get involved in the political process so that you've got a senator or a congressperson or you're part of the administration. So when it comes time to decide what the tax rate's going to be, at least you have a seat at the table to discuss. What I've, what I've oh. said about Bitcoin before, which is worth saying, is it's the hardest property in the world to tax. If you have a billion dollar building in New York, you can't move it. If you have a billion dollar company, you can't move that either. If you have a billion in gold, you can't move that either. If you have a billion dollars of land, you can't move that either. If you have a billion dollars of Bitcoin, you can move that at the speed of light anywhere in cyberspace and no one knows you have it. They don't walk past it every morning. So it's, it's not that it won't be, it's not that you can't be taxed, but it's like that theory if you have a car parked on the street and someone says you should lock your doors and then someone one of your snarky friends says oh really good car thieves can break into your car even if you lock the doors and the answer is yeah they can but if the car in front of me and behind me is nicer than mine and the doors are open they'll steal that car first you know make it a little bit difficult to steal your car make it a little bit difficult to tax your property i tell you this LA is never going to tax Bitcoin if you can move it to Wyoming in a split second, you see. Mm -hmm. They will tax your building because the building's not going anywhere. What I would say uh, to anybody is the way to think about business and life in general is this, this way. You have a P&L and you have a balance sheet. Your P&L is your occupation. It's your vocation. It's what you do. How do you add value in this world? Is it podcasting? Is it, Are you a dentist? Are you a basketball player, right? What is your job? You should be competitive in that job. What we do on our PL is we sell enterprise software to thousands of companies and we compete against other business intelligence software companies. Okay, in that job, it doesn't matter what you are, dentist, doctor, driver, you know, professional marketer. You have to master the tools, the tech, the, the tools, the techniques of your profession. You have to focus laser-like on that don't make the mistake of thinking because you like bitcoin you should stop doing your job as a dentist or a doctor right if you're a dentist and you're good you should be the best dentist you should be you should max you should grow your practice you should hire assistants you should generate as much money as possible then on your balance sheet you should take your cash flows and you should convert them to bitcoin and, uh, and that way, you know that your life savings will not be debased because your treasury will accrete. Now, if you wanna go harder, like if you wanna go faster, if you can mortgage your house, if you have a million dollar a year practice and someone will loan you $3 million, you borrow $3 million against your dental practice and then you buy Bitcoin with it. And what you've done is you've accelerated your cash flows for the next decade like maybe you're making 200,000 a year for the next 10 years. So you borrow a million dollars against that and you take the million and you buy Bitcoin. Now you've actually increased the size of your treasury by a factor of 10, right? Uh, you could take that to another extreme. You could sell equity in your company or in yourself. If you sell equity at the right price, then you could invest that. But so on the balance sheet, you've got financing things you could do. Sweep cash flows, sell equity, sell debt, and then buy an asset that's going up in value. On the PL side, do whatever you can do. It might be that you can tie your business into digital economy and digital assets and Bitcoin and crypto. Like if you're a podcaster, you can do podcasts related to education of that. If you're a bank, you could be a Bitcoin bank. 
if you're a mobile app company or communications company, you could build lightning into your communications, right? So maybe you can improve your product or your service using digital assets and, and uh, crypto technology and Bitcoin, maybe. Maybe you can't, right? Maybe you're a farmer and you know you raise cattle. Okay, don't don't like quit your farming and become a Bitcoin miner because you love Bitcoin because you're competing against a thousand other Bitcoin miners. Make sure that you've got critical assets in whatever business you're going to compete against because they're different things, right? Run your PL efficiently and do the best you can and and grow it with the best ideas you have and then manage your balance sheet prudently. And uh, then you'll probably get a good result.